All right, hey everybody. Aside from the work desk covered in crap, I'm not going to be strictly talking solely about my RTL SDR setup today. I'm going to be including this puppy. This is a Sansui Solid State 200 receiver. This is not a very powerful receiver by any means. I believe it is somewhere in the range of 5 to 10 watts of power. Um, this is what I was using before I got my RTL SDR setup. And it's also the reason why my antenna is as long as humanly possible because I was originally using this for AM DXing. And the main reason is because it has actual hardware instead of using a single integrated circuit like my Harman Kardon tuner. And what I want to talk about is I want to talk about IF stages. Um, and this may not seem like a big deal to most of you as soon as I get into it. But there's a reason behind it. Maybe some of you don't know. The first thing we need to do is we need to take we need to take a look at the Super Heterodyne receiver. This is a receiver architecture invented by Edward Armstrong or Edwin Armstrong. Um, Edwin H. Armstrong. Armstrong was the same man who invented FM radio. Also invented the regenerative receiver, and also, as we will talk about, the Super Heterodyne receiver. There was a problem years ago in radio that they couldn't deal with the high frequencies they do now. Uh, the vacuum tube technology was very limited and we couldn't, we, we couldn't accurately really do it. Um, so receiver sensitivity was pretty low, selectivity was pretty low. Um, but the super heterodyne design changed all that. Basically what you have is you have your antenna signal coming into a an RF amplifier, usually a, no, a low noise amplifier. It then runs into a mixer. Now, into this mixer is what we have. We have a local oscillator, and this is basically just a just a frequency generator running at you know a fixed frequency or a range of frequencies. The local oscillator frequency and the RF frequencies are mixed inside the mixer, which produces a couple of different signals. The one thing we get out of it is what we call an intermediate frequency. It is, it's basically, it's a frequency shifted version of the signal we want. Um, in fact, the ham it up converter is basically a heterodyne. We're taking the RF in from our antenna. We're mixing it in a mixer with the 125 megahertz local oscillator. And after I clean the dust off, I can explain that we run it, then run through some filtering, maybe an IF amplifier. And instead of having a demodulator and an audio amplifier, the rest of it is in software. Um, but this is how most every receiver design today works. It works on the super heterodyne principle because it's one of the most efficient and at the cost of a few extra parts and an extra stage, you get a really good receiver. I mean, this thing was invented in 1918. And as far as basic tuner uh, topographies go, Superhet hasn't really been outdone. There's, pro you know, we have things like the regenerative receiver, which works to a point. We've also got directly tuned radio frequency receivers, which are highly inefficient. But the the super heterodyne receiver is one of the. It's got to be one of the best designs. And, and like I said, most everything works on the superhet principle these days. Your cell phones, your Wi-Fi, your TV, cable boxes, just about everything. Even the even the RTL SDR dongle, I believe, internally on the um, on the tuner chip probably uses some kind of intermediate frequency system to work. So what we can do with most hardware radios is instead of feeding the demodulator, we can feed this IF signal directly into our our dongle, or in this case, feeding it through the up converter. Now, remember, as I said, the up converter itself is basically a heterodyne process because we're mixing, in this case, with the ham it up, we're mixing 125 megahertz local oscillator with the signal coming from the antenna, and we're getting an IF frequency. I mean, that's essentially why that little device will work on just about any radio that can receive 125 megahertz and up. 
Okay, so basically what I'm doing in this video is I'm interfacing my Sansui by pulling the IF, pulling the IF signal, interfacing it with my Hammett up, and we'll follow the we'll follow the wires. Uh, we have over here. I've got a capacitor and a resistor. I always like to add a bypass cap when I or a coupling cap when I'm working on things. There's voltage in in all these stages, which is fine. But I don't want to throw five volts into my converter, so we just use a blocking capacitor to get rid of it. I'm also using a resistor to reduce the strain on the IF stage. And that is literally just clipped into the base of my antenna. Um, a lot of people have said these antennas were garbage. Mine actually uses RG174 coax. So I don't have a garbage. I don't believe. I'm not going to call this a garbage. It's a cheap little base, but it's very effective and it's shielded relatively well. Um, so basically what we're doing is I've tapped into the IF um, on this radio. Now, some of you are probably sitting there going, well, that's nothing new. We've done this before. You're right. It's been done before. In fact, they've talked about using RTL-SDR as pan adapters for some ham radios. The difference is those radios were designed to have an IF output. The main thing here is I'm literally clipped onto the back side of a diode. This is, I don't know if this is the detector diode or just one of the detector diodes. Because essentially what this radio does is it mixes the local oscillator, which is actually that, um, that transistor and that can, as well as one section of the gain tuning cap up here, form the LC network, which basically makes a local oscillator which is then run through, there's an IF can there, there's another IF can. It's run through the circuits and the signals are mixed and then out. And then basically you get at 455 kilohertz in this radio, you get your AM signal. And that's basically fed directly into a detector. So I've pulled from the input side of the detector diode, I've pulled the IF signal. That's the only reason this is a bigger deal than, than what it really is, is because I'm doing this on a radio not designed to have it done, doing something that most people probably wouldn't even think about doing. Um, if you play around with this, I highly, highly recommend, first of all, you should know what you're doing, because if you clip onto the wrong thing, you're going to send voltage into your equipment, and you're not going to have a very good time. It's going to void warranties, and it's going to do all this. So I, I don't recommend you start doing this unless you know what you're doing or you can consult with somebody, and they'll tell you the proper way of doing it. I'm not going to say I'm an RF expert, but I've been hacking around stuff like this since I was about nine years old. So I at least know how to make it halfway safe, and that's why I put a capacitor and a resistor in line with my feed. So. I've got this thing powered on, and I'm sitting on, you can't see the frequency, but I'm sitting on, I believe, 66 AM, and let me go ahead and drop back down here to SDR Sharp, my program of choice, and I've already, I'm um, cheated, I've already had it up, so I'll go ahead and start this, start the stream, there. The eye out of there. and what we're looking at, what we're looking at is we're literally looking at the IF output of the um of the radio it's not very wide the if's not set right i had a hell of a time trying to readjust the if's after i'd screwed them up by ear but if i reach over here as you can see just to prove my hands on the dial i'm going to turn the dial and you can see the carriers start to sweep around as i retune so i'm going up the scale actually that may have been 6 30 a.m but as I move the dial, you can definitely, you can see the uh, carrier sweeping across the screen. Um, of course, I, you know, it's a little more, little more interesting to stop on a signal than it is. Same thing. Um, actually, let me turn this up and I'll sweep through here. And you guys can kind of listen to what it's doing.
Now, what is really... Oh, look, there's an HD radio carrier. Uh, is it the upper or the lower? It's the lower. That must be 8, 10 a.m. because they're the only ones I know that run HD radio. Um, and as you can see, the IF width inside this radio is nowhere near what it is. Uh, I thought that was 8, 10 a.m. You can see here the IF width of, of, of the radio is a lot more narrower than what I'm running. I'm running, I've got, I'm at 14 kilohertz wide and it's exactly not, it's about 10 kilohertz wide, which is standard for standard IF. Um, I do kind of have more on the size, which tells me that it's either off or a very sloppy IF. Um, now the practical use of this, um, I suppose if I had a good noise generator, I could use this to help align the IF stages in a radio because I'd be able to see actual feedback in the waterfall. Um, although most of them, they recommend you, they have a special mode you put your scope in to do it. Um, but, uh, you know, really there's, there's no other real purpose in this other than, ooh, look, we can do it. Um, there is some valid uses. There are quite a few radios on the market, um, as far as ham radios, that have intermediate frequency outputs for pan adapters, some of them giving quite a wide bandwidth. Uh, the one I'm looking at getting in the future is an R390A, which is a, an ex-military radio, and it's been said to represent the height of vacuum tube engineering. It is an absolute beast of a radio. It's a boat anchor and a half. However, it is still one of the best RF front ends ever made. Um, I mean, it could basically probably pull a, pull a gnat farting out of dead air from 3,000 miles away with just a piece of screwdriver at the end. <laughs> but it's a really, really good radio. And I could still get a lot of the advantages of SDR with it because for starters, it doesn't have an SSB module. So I'd be able to do easily do SSB by plugging into its IF output because it, guess what? It has an IF output. Um, whereas when I'm doing it with this radio, we don't. So that, that's the AMIF, and that's pretty close to what it should be running. Most of the radios run them at 450, 455 kilohertz. Uh, with old radios like this, it's always, there's, you know, they often weren't exactly set right. They, the dials were calibrated and the IF was set to whatever the IF was set to. Um, believe it or not, there were people who cared more about where the dial was sitting than whether the radio actually worked right. Go figure. Um, that's AM. So what about FM? Can we get, look at the FM intermediate frequency? Well, yes, we can. We have AMI. We have an FMIF because we do have an FM stage. Um, these are. This is part of the FM stage here. These are three IF cans for the IF stage, and the tap point, as I figured out, is the back side of this diode here. So I'll swap this lead over to this diode like that, and I'll flip over to FM input, and we'll sit back down. I don't know what fell down behind me. And we'll start the SDR back up. Now, of course, our signal is gone. But if I jump up here to whoop, 10, nope, not 100. 10. And if I zoom all the way out, we can see it right over here. That is our FMIF. And it just so happens I seem to be sitting, I guess, on the middle of an FM station. So let me switch to wideband FM mode, and I'll drag this toward the center. And there's some audio here. It is very clearly an FM station, as you can see, and it is coming in in stereo because essentially all we're doing is we're tapped into the exact same signal that the FM decoder actually runs on. Like I said, it's super heterodyne. So there's a conversion stage and you know, your radio itself 
it's tuned to one fixed frequency, you control the oscillation in some of the RF front end stages. Um, I know that's a little bit difficult to comprehend. Hopefully, if you really get into this radio stuff, you'll start reading about things like uh, tuned radio frequency circuits and uh, super heterodynes and regens and some of the other various different kinds of radio circuits out there because back when they were doing this stuff back in the late teens, early 20s, I mean, they these guys were inventing it by the seat of their pants. And it's kind of amazing it, it, it worked. Um, I will say, let me turn this off. I will say in doing this that um, I did notice I, I did notice a few things that I totally expected. Uh, for starters, the Sansui front end for being a cheap '70s receiver is a little bit better than just the straight dongle and up converter. Um, on AM, I noticed a slight improvement. In, in signal. There were stations that came in a little bit more clearly than with just to ham it up. And it was mostly noise floor. I had a much lower noise floor because I'm not running any kind of gain at all right now on that. I mean, you see how big that, you see how that signal is. That's a pretty decent signal. And I'm running it uh, no AGC, no gain, no gain, no gain. Just totally flat, tuned down. I actually have to turn these down Otherwise, the IF will overload the radio. And that's just because we have, at least in the FM section, we've got at least three stages of IF amplification. Um, because that's just how these things work. I don't know how many are in the AM section. I don't have a schematic for this radio. So, you, get, you do get a lot of improvement by throwing a better front end on these things. I mean, the AM improvement was, it was almost depressing to find out just how much better it was running it through the Sansui than using it by itself. Um, almost depressing. Not quite. It, it does let me know there's room for improvement. If I can get my noise floor down, they'd be about even. On FM, well, I'm counting the FM effect up that uh, it can handle, the Sansui can handle my antennas better than my um, RTL SDR setup because uh, I'm not even sure if I can get 97.1 with the piece of wire I've got over the roof on FM. Haven't tried it, might have to. But um, so if you've got a bunch, if you've got a couple of radios laying around, uh, you can you can tap into their IF stages if you know how and if you can do it without blowing stuff up. Or if you've got a more expensive radio out there that has an IF output or um, something like that, that would that would even work. I don't know if it would work for the old FM tuners that had what they called MPX output. There was a point in time where they weren't sure what FM stereo was going, what standard they were going to use. And I think there was a point in time before they even had FM stereo they added what they called an MPX output, which I believe was just the IF output of the mixer that we, you could run into an external stereo demodulator and get stereo or whatever, whatever system they went with. You might even be able to hook up to that. You would get, you know, very limited. Obviously, it's very limited. Instead of having, you know, bandwidths and bandwidth of signal, I've just basically, I've got one signal at a time I can look at. Um, but again, you know, this is, this is this kind of a hack. The Sansui was never designed to have an IF output. We're literally just kind of clipped into the circuit. And, uh, the SDR, I won't say it wasn't designed to have a IF input. It was just kind of designed to not care about what RF levels go into it. So anyway, I am going to go ahead and get out of here. I don't know if I'm going to play with the IF stages anymore tonight or not. Probably not. I played with them all last night. I, I think I've just kind of, I've exploited this as much as I can, um, at least for nighttime. I have some more work to do on the AM section and the Sansui before I would actually recommend using it over the default setup. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. By the way, I was going to do this when I started the video. I now officially have my DXing blog set up. 
I will put a link to it um, somewhere, probably right somewhere in here. I can tap one in and uh, you guys can maybe check it out. I'm not trying to be anything like the bigger RTL SDR news sites. I'm just trying to maybe give a little more background on the videos I make as well as share my experiences and, and my little hacks and tricks and things I figured out. So anyway, I hope you guys will go take a visit. More so hope that you'll bookmark it and check back at it once in a while. Um, you can, of course, leave your comments here. Uh, you can even leave site comments here in the videos. Just let me know in the comment that it's about the site and not the video, and I'll eventually get them. I haven't yet set up Twitter or anything for it. So, thanks a lot for watching. Check out the site. Check out my other videos. I do have a YouTube channel. Um, I don't know how it works. I have a playlist of all my RTL, SDR radio stuff and a couple of other dumb videos I've done. I have no clue how it works. I've seen people with YouTube channels that are just like, they're just so nicely organized. And I guess because I'm logged into my account, I go to mine and it just looks like a mess. I guess I need to um, get on a different computer and see what it looks like to a normal, normal user. So anyway, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you guys will be watching in the future. And um, I wish you all the best adventures. Good night.